There are thousands of enterprise Java workloads out there, many running on WebLogic, and there are tons of Java microservices out there. Say you've been running your custom apps on your own servers, but now you want to take advantage of Kubernetes. Is there an easy way to do that? I'm Alexa Morales, and my guest today is Dave Cabelas, product manager for Verizano, a new open source enterprise container platform. Welcome, Dave. Hi, Alexa. Thanks for having me. So from what I understand, Verizano comprises a set of open source components for running Java workloads across Kubernetes clusters. And it also can automatically wire metrics to monitoring tools like Elasticsearch and Prometheus and Grafana. So how did you choose those tools and how do you package them? We started with the idea of you know, what is it that an enterprise wants to augment Kubernetes with to come up with a true like end-to-end -end secure container platform. So we, we looked at that and said, what are the pieces we need and what are the best pieces out there to help us do that? So that's that's really how we chose it. And, and we do curate all of these pieces. So everything comes from open source, a bunch of them come from, a bunch of the components come from community-driven projects. And for those, we take the source code, we, we scan for vulnerabilities, we build from source, then we make those container images available as part of the product. Yeah, I was uh, wondering about that. So you're not even saying, hey, just go find this here and go find that there you really are taking that guesswork out of it for the user. We do all that legwork, and then we do all the work of saying, how do we make all this stuff work well together? And then we've written a bunch of open source components, mission controllers, operators, that make the whole platform work really well together. And one of the things I wanna say up front um, before we get into more detail is this is in itself an open source project, and people can go to GitHub and, and become contributors. That's correct. That's correct. So we, it's some Oracle-led projects and some community-led projects and all of it, you can contribute to any of it at any time. One thing I thought was interesting is looking at your, your stack, you really have chosen the best of breed and it is so interesting to see from somebody who's been covering the Kubernetes ecosystem for a couple of years now, it's so interesting just to see how how that stack has become consolidated around you know, certain winners. And I just remember going back to KubeCon in Seattle in 2018, and I remember the day I interviewed Tom Wilkie, who was the uh, president of product for Grafana Labs, and he was talking about launching Grafana Loki. At that time, he had spent the whole day on top of Hacker News, and he'd been in open source for 10 years and wow. that was his first win on the internet. So it's so interesting to see how that's evolved. And at the time we were talking about open source being sort of this gold dust. So anyway, here we are all these couple of years later and, and you guys have consolidated around some real winners, Grafana and Prometheus and Elasticsearch and Rancher. Which one stands out for you most? Prometheus has become an absolute standard out there. And, and you know, to kind of add to what you were saying just a minute ago, um, all of these products have kind of matured pretty quickly that because they're out in open source, because they have community involvement, there's a lot of development work going on. There's a lot of evolution and maturing of each of these components like in a pretty short time, right? You're saying 2018 to 2021, that's three years. And we're looking at something that is, you know, has become the standard, works really well. Customers love it. Um, Fluent D is another one that's kind of, has been a little bit newer on the on the stage, but, but you know, is it, I'd say is you know, the most commonly used tool for gathering logs and pushing them to some type of log store. So really like all that, Rancher is also a real key uh, for us. So Rancher Istio is another like really important piece of this platform. Yeah. It's hard It's hard to pick one to say that's really the most important. They all kind of, you know, blend together and form the platform. Yeah, they really do. And and looking at your demos, it's, it's kind of stunning how uh, beautifully represented, you know, the activity is, if we're considering that Kubernetes is the operating system of the cloud, you really do get this sense of how these analytics have gotten to be so available and beautiful. Is there anything you want to say about how you represent any of that? Are you just really taking those pieces? Uh, what would somebody do if they if they saw these beautiful graphs and charts? Do they show it to their boss or? or <laughs> well, really, it is, it's about it's about keeping your application running. Right. right. So the first thing is like, what, you know, is my application running? If it's not running, uh, why isn't it running? Right. So it's like, let me, let me get to the root cause analysis. And so with Verrazano, you know, we, we, we automate the rollout of an observability stack. And then we automate the wiring of that observer of, you know, applications to that observability stack. And where things get really challenging is when you're talking about multi-cloud scenarios. So I've got a series of Kubernetes clusters spread across multiple cloud platforms. And now I'm trying to manage my workloads across these things. How do you know? How do I how do I make that easier? And really, Verrazano 
like when you, as you deploy your applications, we wire it all and we federate Prometheus automatically to push all of the metrics eventually to a central location. So you do have that really that single pane of glass that enables you to see what's going on in your estate of applications. Now, I also think it's interesting that you're focusing on, even though you call it the container platform, you, you kind of focused on an application orchestration model rather than a container orchestration model. And you're using this something called the open application model. So explain why you made that choice. So when I think about Kubernetes or I think about container orchestration, I really think Kubernetes does a great job there. But what do I need beyond that, right? And so this is where the idea is, I've got different workloads, different containers, right? Um, that form, that together form an application, right? So, or maybe you might think of it, of it as an application system. So now I need to be able to kind of take these, this unit and deploy it into maybe a, a remote Kubernetes cluster or a local Kubernetes cluster. Um, it's, but, but actually being able to manage the life cycle of that group as a unit is really important. Um, so we, we had actually started down the path of a proprietary modeling uh, technology. And as we were, as we were you know, talking with customers and getting more and more feedback, it was like, this was really important. Um, and then we discovered open application model, uh, which was a community, which is a community driven standard around uh, application modeling. And, and we decided that we don't really want to have something that's proprietary. We like with the whole spirit of open source and community driven um, application development, we wanted to have really, you know, adopt a standard. And so we did that. And so open application model is, a, it's, it's really a nice standard that says, okay, as an application developer, I don't need to know where my application is going to be deployed. I just need to know I've got a thing that I need to write. And it's, let's call it my, you know, credit card processing service. Great. I write that, boom, I create a container out of it. Now it's ready to go. And then I've got a, an application operator who says, okay, for this application system, I need my credit card processing service. I need my catalog service. I need my order shipping service, et cetera, right? So this is my unit now. So we put them together. We say, as we're deploying into this environment, there are specific traits that are important. Uh, for example, I might be talking to a specific database or I know I need to set up an ingress in a certain way for the application to come into the service mesh. Um, all that becomes part of that assembly. So I've got components that are independent an assembly and now I can deploy it into um, into whatever you know environment that I want mm -hmm. and and not to just keep talking but, but the next cool thing is um, it, you know you get the benefits of um, of really containerized applications deployed into Kubernetes I can update and I can scale any of those individual components at will right I, I don't have to like think of this whole thing as a monolith right but I get the benefits of the life cycle of saying, okay, I've got, I've, I've got this thing that I need to, you know, push into this environment. So. Right. And the other kind of, I think, thing that we forget a little bit, and tell me if I'm going way far afield with this, but I think we forget a little bit of how stunning the, the Kubernetes, um, you know, cluster and node model is in terms of the ability it, it, it gives your applications to themselves sort of um, stay healthy, right? And say, I need more of this. I need more of that, right? Am, am I getting that right? You are, you are. If you think about things like auto scaling um, and even like failover or, or automatic healing in a sense, right? So Kubernetes knows I've got these nodes. If a node goes down, it migrates pods elsewhere. We'll restart that node. It re rebalances as needed. So so Kubernetes does a whole lot of that stuff and, and it's really good. And so we build, you know, with Verizon, we build on top of all of that, right? To say, okay, you get all that, and now let's let's make it um, great for things like web logic workloads. It, it's easy for me to um, modernize my existing applications by converting them to containers, and then using the web logic Kubernetes operator um, to to manage at runtime those web logic environments. So I've got great you know benefits that sit on top of the Kubernetes piece. Um, right. Right. So. Now, what can go wrong in terms of security, and and how are you prepared for that? So um, <laughs> what can go wrong? Oh boy. <laughs> so um, we, we, we build in multi-level security for, to Verrazano to really prevent the things from going wrong. So um, first of all, we protect Verrazano itself. So how can, you know, how can we prevent somebody from getting into the system and monkeying around with things? So we, uh, we ship with Keycloak as part of the, the solution or the stack. Uh, we use that for um, even RBAC controls within uh, Kubernetes to say, 
there are particular users who can manage projects within Verrazano and some who can't, right? So, so we have like multi levels of, of users within that system. So protecting uh, Verrazano itself is important. And then protecting your applications is also important. So you can use uh, Keycloak to federate to uh, some other identity store. You can use it to protect directly if you want to. Uh, so that's you know sort of one piece of protection. And then the last piece of protection is really the network uh, protection. So by default, we create a, an Istio service mesh uh, within the Kubernetes clusters where Verrazano is deployed. And then when you deploy your applications, we uh, require a mutual TLS for all of those applications. As you deploy, we set up the network policies for, for um, traffic between the different application components. So we're, we're really you know, protecting um, in multiple layers here to, to make sure that uh, the application is safe Okay, so let's say somebody is ready to get started. If you've got a Kubernetes cluster already, you install the platform operator using a kubectl command. Did I say that right, kubectl? That's the way I say it, but okay. right. <laughs> some people say kube control. Okay. However, whatever fits you. And then you wait for the deployment to complete, and then you install the Verrazano uh, components. And as we already discussed, you can also contribute on GitHub. So there's a couple other things coming up. You've got a, a live lab for fundamentals um, and also some really cool tutorials for, for Heladon and JBatch for Java Batch jobs and, and a Hello World REST service with Heladon. What are you going to, where are you seeing the most interest or activity among all of those options to, to get started with this? There are so many things that people can do with this platform. It's, it's pretty interesting, right? So there's definitely um, a great set of value when we're talking about moving web logic workloads to Kubernetes. This Verizon makes it really simple to do that. But of course, you know, Verizon is not just a Java or not just a, a web logic platform. It is truly meant to be your the general purpose platform for all of your container workloads. So. Um, what I'm seeing is customers say, okay, great. So I've got this web logic thing, but then I also have this other set of microservices, but you know, what do I do to deploy them? And we've got examples that show that. So we've got, um, a Bob's books example, which is a fictitious, um, bookstore where there, uh, an acquisition happens and there are some microservices and some web logic and some coherence and all that mix. And so we, we show how that's deployed using OAM, uh, application modeling into an environment and, uh, and again, you know, the full life cycle happens there. We do also have some standard um, examples like the sock shop example, which is uh, an example that comes out of WeWorks. Um, we've ad adapted that to use Heladon and then we just deploy that directly onto Verrazano and it works like any other microservice like you would expect, except we do all the heavy lifting for you. That's super cool. And it's cool that you're weaving together a couple different Oracle open source projects as well. So it's both outside Oracle CNCF projects and within. Well, thank you so much for joining me, Dave. Thanks so much for having me. This was great. Really appreciate it.